Yeah. Thank you. Good evening. I'd like to call the November 2nd special receipt of meetings of order. Will we all please stand for pledge of allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, and we'll get started with our superintendent's report, Dr. Parkinson. All right, thank you, Receiver Nichols. And uh, school board members, thank you. welcome to the audience and everyone who is present. Um, excited to provide you with some great things that are happening in the school district. I just want to start by first making everyone aware that the marking period has is, is ended. Um, it's ending on um, November the 4th, so we will be entering into the second marking period. Um, huge congratulations to our varsity football team who yeah. have finished the season yeah. um, with a 9-1 record, the best season, um, from my understanding, in, in the district history. They will be taking on Marple Newtown on Saturday for the district, um, the district playoffs. So congratulations to all the football, football players and our cheerleaders who support them every weekend. So um, obviously, if you're interested in going, the game will be coming Saturday at um, Chester, uh, or Chester Field. All right. Um, we actually had a great day yesterday. November 1st was a busy day for us in the district. Um, and I'm sure Receiver Nichols will give more information about the visit that we had from the Pennsylvania Department of Education. They were here. I'm sure he'll give you additional information about that. But yesterday was the grand reopening of the Clipper Cafe, where um, our students um, are in our culinary arts classroom provided us with a, a wonderful meal. Um, that they put together. So we are really excited to see that back in, in operations and a lot of big plans for the Clipper Cafe. We're looking to move towards um, having the cafe open at least one day a week in the coming week um, to serve our community. So we're looking to welcome back all of our community members um, to the, Chris, uh, the, the Clipper Cafe. All right. Um, Next is just to talk about, obviously, a quick recap. The last time we were together, we talked about the great homecoming event that was taking place. Um, homecoming was an amazing event for our students. Um, you know, again, things, things went very well for our students and um, had a great time uh, seeing all of the, the alumni come back to support our student, um, support the Chester Upland School District once again. All right, that's, that's actually all I have this evening. Receiver Nichols for the, the uh, book. Thank you, Dr. Parkinson. Uh, again, yesterday we did have a visit from our good friends at PDE, uh, Department of Education, and it was a very, very great uh, visit. We went around and we visited uh, four of our schools. The PDE was very, very pleased with our students, our staff, and everything that they, you know, uh, uh, that, that we discussed on yesterday, especially our culinary arts program. They were truly uh, satisfied with the meal that was provided by our students. And again, if we can give our students a round of applause. You know, they uh, joke that we fed them on purpose so that, you know, they can give us written reviews back to the Secretary of Education, which we were told that they are going to be given a written review. And, you know, they made mention that this uh, district is going in the direction that they would like to see and that we're on a path to you know, exiting receivership and some other things. So that's good to hear directly from the Department of Education. Uh, Mr. Jackson is here with us tonight as our student rep. So Mr. Jackson, the floor is yours to give your student rep report. Yep. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Mal... <laughs> that's Sorry. That's okay. That's okay. okay. <laughs> good evening, everyone. Good evening to... Mm. Receiver Nichols, elected school board members, Dr. Parkinson, and Chester Upland School District community. For those who, who do not know I, who I am, my name is Malachi Jackson. I am vice president of the STEM Academy, and welcome to Chester High. First, I have our, our STEM Schools TV. Our STEM Schools TV program is a, ch is a chance for our students to have a great outlet and a great opportunity to have their voices spoken and, and a great chance for them to be interested in, in activities like school journalism 
as well as communications technology, and a way to spread news from up and coming events for our, from our school, for our school body. And please check that out. Please check that out when you have a chance. Next, uh, I want to congratulate our students of the month for from each grade. I want to congratulate our students of the month from each grade. They've all set a great example for our students, and I wish and I hope that they set a great example for the year for the rest of the school year. Next, I would like to congratulate. Um, next, I would like to congratulate um, our staff member of the month. Congratulations to Miss Turner Wright. From my experiences, she has been a really easy to work with, and she has helped me with my time at STEM and helped me with. Yeah, skip the video. Skip. Yes, please. Right. Um, she has helped me with our time at my time at STEM, and she has helped me with you know planning my future for my co for college. Of the week of October seventeenth, we started our annual school spirit week. Our themes were Meme Monday, Gender Opposite Tuesday. Um, Senior Citizen, Senior Citizen Wednesday, Go <laughs> Back Thursday, and School Colors on Friday. And there are the pictures for everyone to look at. On October 21st, we held our annual pep rally. Before we traveled to Chester High, we had our classes come down to the auditorium and, and, write, and paint their names on our banners and have their faces painted. We also had some of our seniors paint their jeans if they brought them. And even though our pep rally started a little late and we found it, ran into a few, few incidents, we all, everyone said they had a great time and it worked out great for everyone. <clears throat> I, want to thank, I want to thank Mr. Thompson and Ms. King and student officers at Chester High and as well as my team at STEM. We all worked really hard to make sure every, everything went well for those great weeks, for that great week. Then I would like to... Next, I would like to introduce our homecoming dance. Our theme was Masquerade, and it was held on October, October 21st. Everyone said everyone looked amazing, and everyone had a great time, is what I, from what I've heard. Our homecoming game was held on the 22nd at 11 a.m. Our Chester Clippers won that game against the Chester High Eagles with a, with a score 24 to 0, making our record, making our record at the time was 8 and 1. And I would like to acknowledge them uh, at the time. No, sorry, they already have there. I would like to thank them for their with, with their work at the Academy Park game, and with the score being at the end, thirty nine to sixteen in our favor, winning that game. So good job, team. And then the week, this the upcoming week of no, November fourteenth to November eighteenth, we will be holding our school. We will be holding a college tour for our seniors. This college tour. We, and on this college tour, we will be visiting seven colleges, with those colleges being North Forks, Nor, Norfolk State University, Hampton University, Virginia State University, North Carolina Central University, Shaw, Shaw, Bowers State, Shaw Bowers State University, George Washington University. I would like to thank every, everyone for listening to my presentation, and I would appreciate if anyone would like to sponsor our students for the college tour. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. I think you did a magnificent job. I'm sorry. It's on the website. Okay. I think you did a magnificent job. You know, so don't don't worry. You know, sit in front of, and for the people watching at home, if you see the audience, they're not smiling at us right now. So, Mr. Jackson, I understand. I'm nervous too. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, you get them thank you. I apologize for not announcing that. Oh, no, it's fine. Okay. It's fine. That's okay. You did a wonderful job. You did a wonderful job. Okay. Now just sit back and relax for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. At this time, I know we have some presentations. I believe we have a, a few tonight. I know we have one by Dr. Wilson uh, related to special education, Mr. Mr. Ray Thompson for our Digital Academy. And I see the principal. Oh, we got three. Oh, that's a good night. That's a good night. Philly's 
Sixers. Okay. So uh, we'll flip coin. Who wants to go first? Ladies first. Ladies first. All right.
is the digital difference? Senior Dante Singleton probably sums it up best. Okay. Hi, my name is Dante Singleton. I am a Chester High School senior for Digital Academy, and I actually do like digital, digital like so. I thought it would be bad for me, but it actually does. And it and they actually help you as to where it's like you're a person, but you're not. And I'm in, I am in digital because I had the situation I had, I had no trick budget over here. So, and I actually like it. We offer direct instruction in core subjects. English, math, science, social studies, and we support independent work and electives ranging from digital art and design to veterinary science. Our elementary and middle school students can take health, photography, Spanish, or art. Our high school students have a menu of 16 choices from music appreciation, to the theater and film production, to cosmetology, criminal justice, fashion design, and health. Our teachers are the key as 11th grader Maria Ramos explains. Um, my name is Maria Ramos. I'm in grade 11. Uh, what I like about digital is that the teachers will help us and break down the questions. Um, the short of my favorite teacher is because she will help the students and she has this pacing calendar and this vocabulary thing for Harry Potter. Our incentive program provides Amazon gift cards to students of the month in each grade for having the highest composite score of completed work, course grade, attendance, and the time on task. Students of the month are entered into a drawing at the end of the year for student of the year in each grade. It's my great pleasure to introduce the September students of the month for 2022. Hello, my name is Gary Collins and I'm student of the month for fifth and sixth grade. My name is Carla Rose, I'm a student of the seventh grade. My name is Jerry Thomas, I'm a student of the fifth grade. My name is Danny Stewart, and I've been selected as student of the month of September for ninth grade. Hi, my name is Ayala, and I'm a student of the month for tenth grade in the month of September. Hi, I'm Robert Tucker. I hope that many friends can get out of the month for September. Hi, my name is Jenna. I'm in 12th grade. I was still out of for September, and I participate in Bible College. We also have a very strong PBIS program based on expectations for positive behaviors in the academy. We use a program called Live School to track and reward students who meet our expectations for being present, responsible, and respectful across four domains in the community, while working independently, while working with staff, and after school. Live school allows us to see at the press of a button how the school, an individual grade, or an individual student is doing with regards to meeting or exceeding behavioral expectations. This is our live school dashboard. And you can see that for the first two months of school, we are running 12 to 1, positive to negative. And congratulations to our top point earner, Jalen Thomas. On Thursday mornings, students get to spend their hard-earned points in our rewards store with prizes ranging from an early dismissal on Friday to a Kindle Fire tablet. This is our rewards catalog. Students can pick every Thursday from these rewards if they have enough points. Uh, at the low end, the 25-point incentive is a quiz pass. The most popular incentive is an early dismissal on Friday after lunch. And they range all the way from gift cards to trips to museums, nights at the movies, all the way up to Bluetooth speakers, uh, Kindle Fire tablets, or wireless headphones. Like the rest of the district, we are also involved in the positive action social emotional learning curriculum. Our kickoff lesson was last week, and we had 100% participation from our elementary and middle school students and about 70% participation from our high schoolers. So what is the difference between a brick and mortar school and a digital academy? The only real difference is that our students work remotely and we communicate
incredibly frequently and directly with parents and guardians. Students, parents, and guardians receive an hours report on Monday morning that details how much time the students spent working on classwork. In general, students who meet the weekly hours requirement are in good shape academically. We also provide students and parents and guardians with weekly progress reports that detail the student's status in every class so that adjustments can be made to ensure success. This is an example of a student's weekly progress report. Students receive course status, what their current grade is, how much of the course they have complete, what the target should be for completion, how many hours they should have been working, and how many hours they actually have been working. You can see this sample student is passing three of his four majors and is only having some difficulty in his electives. In addition to live school and home access center, parents and guardians have observer accounts on our learning software GradPoint and can see up to the minute where their students are spending their time. I'm going to close out tonight's presentation with some thoughts from three of our younger students, Rajai Allen, who's in grade 9, Landon Miller from grade 5, and Tyree Grant from grade 7. Thank you all for your attention and your continued support of digital programming at Chester Upland School District. Um, my name is Rajai Allen. Um, I like digital because well, I like to learn to do is the learning is very different from what we did in school, so it's kind of easy. Yeah. Now that I'm really getting into it this year, it's kind of like easy for me, and I'm, I'm better understanding than what I did last year because I'm really focused now. So now I see all the work that I'm doing it, you know, how to get in my groove. Um, hi, my name is Megan Miller. Um, I'm in fifth grade in September, and I want to be uh, the student in the morning one day. What do you like about the digital program, Megan? I mean, it's fun. You could get the learn in the morning instead of just coming to school, and you, um, Right about like a lot of technology and stuff in the computers. Hello, my name is Harry Gray and I'm in the seventh grade. And the reason why I chose digital is because, well, it's because well, I feel like comfortable and like, you know, not like being in public sometimes because it's kind of, you know, like overwhelming just to just, like, you know, see other people like being around me sometimes, but sometimes, well, I just like being social sometimes, but. Since it's like, you know, pandemic and I just want, you know, like to not get COVID or anything like that, so that's why I chose, you know, Digital Online Academy. But the more I make some friends on here, I just felt comfortable about, you know, you know, like being on digital. Thank you again for your time and attention this evening. If you have any questions, please feel free to email the Digital Academy at info.dtba at chesteruplandsd.org or call 267-541-3194. Have a great night. Thank you, Ms. Thompson. That was a great presentation. Yeah. And I have to put the plug in. We are always recruiting for our Digital Academy. Uh, all those other, the lawyer's not here. <laughs> Cyber schools, come on over to Chester Upland and Digital Cab and we can make it worth your while. Yes, sir. I would just like to add that Landon Miller, who said he one day wanted to be Student of the Month, was named Student of the Month for October. Oh. <laughs> Dr. Wilson. And of course, I'm here just to talk a little bit about some of the bright spots and great opportunities within the Department of People Services. It's a pleasure to meet everyone 
Uh, this is, I believe, my count is the 44th day. Uh, so in the Department of People's Services, we are continuing to add on to the successes of last year while at the same time understanding there are opportunities to pivot and continue to improve. And so that is our focus. So as we just walk through tonight, we really want to make sure that you have an opportunity to understand some of the challenges that some of our students are facing. So as you look uh, at the next slide, we want to just see some of the uh, challenges that our students are facing even before they come to school, whether it's due to some economic challenges. Some of our students, of course, are struggling in terms of lack of sleep, lack of motivation, challenges around really being able to concentrate at school. And so these are just 15 of some of the stressors that our students may be experiencing prior to their arrival from school or actually once they physically get in the school building itself. So with that being said, what I really want us to talk about is what is our focus, what are we planning to do about it, and what are some of our need areas to continue, as I said, to just grow and develop as a district. So in terms of our focus, on our next slide you'll see that we are focused as a department on three main uh, objectives. We want to make sure that we are data driven. So when we have conversations around pupil services, how many students are we referring to? To what degree are they experiencing the needs that they're experiencing? Uh, what are some of the past practices that we've attempted? And what were the indicators of success for those practices? But also, in addition to being data driven, we want to make sure that we are culturally responsive, that we are ensuring that for our students, that the intervention that we are putting in place makes sense for the context in which our students are operating. And then lastly, we want to make sure that we are research-based in everything that we do. So really looking at what are best practices. Oftentimes we know past practice and best practice may be different. Sometimes they're aligned, but how do we ensure that what we're doing within the department is actually best practice? So I want to talk a little bit about some of the supports and services that we provide. The uh, Department of People Services actually encompasses a lot. So you'll see in a moment that we range everything from, of course, what you know to be, of course, social emotional learning. So that's some of what the Digital Academy and the other folks were talking about in terms of positive action. And that does a great job in terms of Ms. Bowser making sure that the lessons are taking place, that there's coaching happening around those lessons, and there's actually, uh, she shared with me an article yesterday where in the local paper, the uh, positive action lessons were also featured because of some of the great results we're already experiencing. But in addition to that, of course, we have our traditional special education services as well, which we know range from everything in terms of autistic support, emotional support. We have students that receive life skill support, multidisciplinary support as well. We have students who need related services, which could include speech, OT. Uh, we have students, of course, who are receiving counseling services. We have students who have PCAs. Uh, in addition, of course, we also provide transition services for our students who are uh, 14 and above and making sure there are transition goals. Uh, but again, in addition to special education, we have licensed social workers uh, in several of our buildings who support not only students who have IEPs, but also just supporting meeting with small groups of students or meetings with students individually. In addition to that, within the department, we have, of course, the 504 plans, which are sometimes students you know, who may have a disability but not require specially designed instruction. Uh, we are responsible for implementing MTSS at a district level, as well as positive behavior intervention and support. Uh, in addition to that, we have, uh, of course, within our department, responsible as the district uh, foster care liaison and also uh, educating uh, children and youth who are experiencing homelessness. So that being said, the Department of People Services encompasses a lot, um, but it is also because our students need a lot. And so what our goal is to really wrap our arms around our students, and we're always striving to get better. So I appreciate some of the feedback that I've received so far in terms of opportunities uh, for growth, and we're continuing to make strides in that regard. When we look at just the numbers with our students, specifically around special education, it's really important in terms of context. Uh, overall, when this was created, we had at that time approximately 3,100 students who were in the district. Uh, out of that number, you can see that approximately 932 of those students 
were receiving special education. Uh, out of that number, uh, approximately uh, 400 students are receiving learning support, 69 students are receiving autistic support, and you can just see where some of the largest student need populations are housed within our district. Uh, again, it is, of course, our responsibility to make sure that we provide a free, appropriate public education. So whatever the student needs, the team needs to really talk about those needs, but also making sure that a student has a plan to hopefully exit special education if, po if possible. So if a student starts in kindergarten or first grade, ultimately we want for the student to come to the point where they can no longer need certain services and supports. If they do need it, then of course we want to provide them. But again, we want to begin to titrate so students are able to function independently as much as possible. And that being said, again, a dish of our size, we do have students who have very needs. So there are some students who, again, in 12th grade, they may still need those supports, and we want to make sure that we're providing them. Uh, as we talk about the services for our students, we are responsible for making sure there is a continuum of services. So when we're thinking through uh, making sure that students first have an opportunity for that support in a general education setting, so that may be a student who has a disability but in fact does not require an IEP, they may not require specially designed instruction, all the way through to a student who may need to receive support at the highest level, which would be and out of district places. So in between, we may have anything from our itinerant level service, and we'll talk more about that in a moment. Uh, we may have students who are receiving co-teaching support. We may have students who are also receiving uh, support, but in a self-contained setting, but in the district. So again, continuing with services based upon uh, the individual student's needs. I kind of previewed this a little bit, but when we're talking about uh, the type of special education uh, support received, we have some students who are at that itinerant level, so that's up to 20%. Uh, a large number of our students are going to be at that supplemental level, which is going to be that 21 to 79%. And then we have some students who are considered full-time, which does not mean 100% of the time they're receiving special education, but that's 80% or above. And again, this is all according to uh, what many of you know are state guidelines, federal guidelines, and we just want to make sure that we are consistent with that in terms of implementation. So again, some bright spots within our department. We know that, again, a uh, great job is already taking place in terms of our social-emotional learning within our schools. Uh, the lessons are taking place, a lot of positive feedback. Uh, there is a survey that the students complete once the lesson is done, which gives us a lot of meaningful data in terms of just the, effect, the effectiveness of that lesson, but also the student engagement, because we want to make sure that the resources we place in front of our students are resources that they actually enjoy. Uh, some additional bright spots in terms of department is that we ran into somewhat of a problem, but it's a good problem to have, which is that more of our students in early intervention chose to come to the district for kindergarten rather than remain in that early intervention setting. And so that's a great problem to have because what that means is that we had to request some additional supports for those students. Uh, but again, it also shows that uh, families are trusting us more and are excited once they have an opportunity to interact with our staff in terms of ways that we're supporting their children. So in terms of additional supports that we are looking to add or in the process of adding in terms of the course of the year that are really important, um, one of the things that we've put in place is that uh, CUSA, one of our schools, as well as some other selected schools, are, are currently undergoing training in a trauma-attuned model, which gives them an opportunity for intensive coaching to really make sure that in addition to the social-emotional learning that I already talked about, um, there's really that teacher-focused support in ways that they can make sure that they're addressing students' needs who may be experiencing trauma. And so that's a great resource for our students. Um, but we are looking to expand that to other schools as well. So stay tuned for that. In addition, we are constantly looking for ways to strengthen our PBIS. I was excited to see uh, for our two schools who presented today for them to incorporate that a part of uh, their presentation. But as a district, we want to continue to provide support and training for schools who may need a jump start or a refresher uh, where necessary. Uh, in terms of some additional supports around special education, we are looking to add additional support around psychological services. Uh, we have a number of evaluations that we are in the process completing, but we are also, as I mentioned, our ultimate goal is to bring 
uh, many of our students who are out of district back to the district if it's appropriate as a part of that process that many of those students will need to be reevaluated. So we want to make sure that we have people in queue to make sure that that is happening. Uh, in addition to that, we want to make sure that our schools, uh, when those students do return to the district, that we have the BCBA support. So really that opportunity where there's behavior analysts who are working with our school-based staff to make sure there are clear support plans in place to understand student behavior and to support them uh, as much as possible. And lastly, uh, we want to really look at our space utilization. So what are those opportunities to, again, to identify where we can add additional classrooms uh, with some of our programs as we're seeing, again, an increase around autistic support needs and some of our emotional support needs. But it does take space to be able to do that. So that's part of the work that we want to do along with academic programs to make sure that we are considering it again. When the students come back, where are they going to be? How are they going to make sure that we have all the resources in place to support them? And so I just also just finally wanted to make sure that uh, everyone has some contact information. Obviously, I'm the director of the department, uh, but there are many folks within the department who are here to support uh, the district's needs, our students' needs, and we know ultimately that within the Chester Upland School District, the need is great, but at the same time, so is our determination, so is our will, and so is the expertise in the room. So together, we want to utilize all of that to provide better outcomes for our students. So again, we just wanted to highlight some of the things that's happening in the department, and I'm looking forward to engaging in conversations. So have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for, to all of our presenters this evening. Uh, again, we said that we will make sure that we bring more information to the general public as it pertains to you know, schools and students and programs that we have here. So you'll see this more and more each and every month. Uh, before we move on, I would like to ask Ms. Uh, Mosley, our business uh, manager, if you wanted to speak on the college tour sponsorship. Yes, I did just want to give a little more shot of the light. Could you? Oh, I'm sorry. Can you hear me? Is that any better? Yes. Okay, no. No, no we got to take that. Oh. <laughs> uh, no, so today the district actually launched our online cashless platform that we're using for student activity. Uh, that is something we need. Move to, to eliminate cash coming in and out of the district, which will help, of course, our building leaders with transparency and also make sure all the funds that are collected for our students are actually deposited and used for the intent of our students. Um, more of that will be provided next week as the building leaders um, receive their materials to advertise towards the families. However, as a soft launch, uh, STEM, who will be attending their college tour November 14th through the 18th, he actually has flyers in the back. Um, you can do uh, direct online donations for sponsorships for um, the college tour. There is a QR code on here, so you literally can just scan the code and it takes you right to that website. We also are going to try to get that link posted on the website and also on our social media accounts. So uh, to just really push to, uh, as many people as possible can donate so the uh, STEM students can go on their college tour in a couple weeks. <coughs> um, the full uh, sponsorship is $260. But you can get more. A partial, they, they, they told me to say this. A partial sponsorship is $52. But again, you can get more. Ms. Mosley and whoever, my wife will kill me, but she'll sponsor, she will sponsor <laughs> two students. So we'll make sure that you get two from the Mr. Bell, you'll hold me to it. I sure will. Uh, before we move on in the agenda, I just want to make two more announcements. Uh, every year, for the last nine years, the district has uh, had a great relationship with the Auto Dealership Association, in which coats have been donated to our students at Chester Upland School District. And this uh, past uh, last Thursday, Thursday, Wednesday or Thursday, the days run together. Last week, uh, we were able to have them here upstairs in our gym giving out uh, more coats to our students. And to date, you know, we, we need to be thankful this we've had over $700,000 in donation and donated coats to the Chester Upland School District. 
So we want to publicly thank the Auto Dealership Association for their contributions to our students over the years and this year. And I know that uh, coats were dispersed today. Uh, the students at CUSA received their coats actually at the event. They did a phenomenal job, the students at CUSA put on some concerts, a concert and everything. Uh, they were singing and dancing, it was just, it was fun. I, I, but I'll say this, this generation with the coats, they had on their coats in the gym, the gym was probably 80 degrees in the gym. I didn't quite understand it, but you know, I have a, a, I'll have a 14 year old and she keeps reminding me on Saturday and I don't understand why they wear these puffer jackets in the winter and hoodies in the, in the no, I'm sorry, puffer jackets in the summer and hoodies in the winter, but I guess that's the new thing. But again, we thank them for their generous donation to the Chester Upland School District. And I also like to make mention that Chester Upland School District under, we, we underwent uh, ESSER monitoring last week. So the, the uh, auditors, monitors were here for four days and, and uh, you know, uh, the business office, Ms. Mosley, Dr. Mean. Ms. Hales and, and Ms. Yalbury did a phenomenal job, and I have to say this publicly, we have it in writing as well, that uh, they said that the work that we're doing here as it pertains to managing ESSER dollars for record keeping and everything is the model that they want to use across the state. So I, I, I take my hat to you know, Ms. Mosley and the business office and everyone over there for all the hard work and dedication they have toward that, so that's the plus. Okay, now we'll move right on to the agenda to the approval of the minutes on September 20th or September 29th. I hereby approve the uh, receiver's minutes for uh, September 29th, 2022. At this time, do we have a signing sheet today? We'll move into, based off of the signing sheet, public comment on action items only, based off of the signing sheet. Okay. Sunshine law requires that we have to offer the public an opportunity to ask public comments on action items before any action is taken. <coughs> Ms. Deneen Mosley, folio number 49 1101 70300. Is this yes for A or do you want the whole thing? This is the whole thing. <coughs> Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Um, my first question is in regards to, sorry. And Ms. Mosley, I probably should do this first because there were minor tweaks and changes that I probably should announce before. Okay. Just in case, you, you can, it's really, really quickly. Their agenda item 822, the budget source has changed from Title I set aside to ESSER II funding. That's agenda item A22. So that was one change. Under the personnel agenda under B1, the guidance counselor, that will not be a guidance counselor at CUSA, but at Chester High School. And the other change, under B4, the, the positions that are being created aren't, aren't full-time positions. We're meeting to have a budget amendment, but these are needs that the district has, and we are, you know, especially in the special ed department required with the influx of students that uh, we serve to have those positions there. And uh, I, I believe there are, no, I know, a vast majority of these positions are gonna be covered by grants. But just know that we will be, this will, you'll see this on the next agenda as well with a lot more detail, but we need to do this step to create the positions before we fill the positions. So they are being filled. So was that B7? That is uh, B4. Am I wrong? Am I wrong? Oh, yes, that's B7, yes. Okay, all right. So those positions, because I, I did have a question on that one. Those positions are being created mm -hmm. to support our special education needs? 
Is that uh, what you're stating? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them are to are related to special education. Yes. Okay. Out of ten. Um, I um, would like um, more information on B6. Um, what does the centralizing of student registration consist of? Is this a one-time um, need, or is this something that would happen every year? So it is a one-time need, and it is uh, not to exceed. So once the position is filled for the child accounting, uh, position that that employee is moving from to the PIMS administrator, once we feel that, they will no longer receive that stipend. The stipend will be evenly divided with uh, 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 among the pays that are remaining in this fiscal year, but it won't be a continued thing. It's possible that we can hire someone in that child accounting position in December, and that person will no longer receive the stipend. But they're doing both jobs. They'll, well, they will be doing both jobs. Oh, I, I would like to ask, what is the procedure on the advertising of the meeting? Because I am not seeing any advertising of this meeting. It used to be posted on the website 48 hours before. It, That's not happening. It, I have not for the last couple months seen it posted. And then um, we also need uh, a little bit more due diligence on getting the agenda post it timely so we're not kind of in the meeting looking through the agenda to be able to ask questions. So I know that that was something we endeavored to do. So if that um, could happen, it would be very helpful. Yeah, we'll make sure that that happens. But I do know that the meetings for the year were advertised as required by law in the Daily Times. I did not know that they weren't being posted on our website, but I, we can resolve that. Okay, That's thank you. Issue. And the agendas, for the most part, I know that when you, when the board has their committee as a whole meeting, that the agenda, for the most part, is it doesn't really change. There were some additions to this one. Mm -hmm. But um, we can, yeah. what am I looking for? Well, I'll make sure that they get out much, much sooner. Okay, thank you. All right, thanks. Thank you. All right, Ms. Karen Maya, uh, 904 Fusey Street. Good evening. Good I just evening. had two quick questions. Mm -hmm. And I know that um, we've had the discussion before regarding salaries not being posted. But as taxpayers, don't we have a right to know people's salary, especially when our money is paying these people's salaries? That's my first thing. And then the second thing as a coach, um, we receive a stipend, which is not listed how much we are receiving, but I just want to make sure that we're being consistent under Title IX because whatever you pay for the boys, you must pay for the girls. So I don't see any salaries on here. So I just want to make sure that that is actually done. Okay? Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Ms. Karen. Ms. A. Jane Arnold, 2601 McCarrick Street. Good evening and thank you. Good evening. Good evening. I want to be uh, correct in my comments at this point. Are you asking for comments that are on the agenda? Correct. Okay. Only at this point. Uh, D1 talks about Acadians renewal with COVID funds. And I am very pleased that your audit for COVID funds produced such a positive response. In my way of thinking, because we have had Acadians before, we had these funds, and we had to keep that software renewed, etc. It sort of brings a question to my mind that we could use those funds, ESSO funds, for that at this time. Uh, I don't know all the parameters for the use of the funds but it seems to not fit in my way of thinking. And the other point I wanted to make out about that is that um, I think that we were doing double testing earlier and um, there is a process where we take the results and we put it online, we submit it, and I heard that the technology was not in place at the time. There was a, um, a pause, shall we say, until we paid the bill and I'm seeing that we are talking about renewing that 
contract or what have you tonight. Okay. So if someone could talk a little bit more in details about that bubble, that hiccup that happened with this software program back when we were doing the testing earlier, that would be helpful. And I think those are the only items that I have to talk about that are on the agenda per se. Thank you, Ms. Arnold. Um, I, I, I don't know of a bubble, uh, Dr. Dr. Sutton. Do we know of any? So there's a, um, there are physical booklets and there's a digital platform that you input the data from the physical booklets into the digital platform. So we had access to the digital booklets, but we needed a digital platform. Okay. So that's what that is. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Sutton. All right, there are no more public comments. And again, uh, you know, new format, I see some new faces. We, we, the uh, committee as a whole, the department gets come, they present the resolutions that they are going to be presenting at the receiver's meeting. They go over them in detail. So they no longer come up and read A1 through tonight, 34. Um, if there are no questions, which we answered any questions that came from the public, uh, board members, you're satisfied you had your questions answered in executive session. So at this time, with the minor changes that were already noted for the record, I will be approving action items under the agenda, education agenda A1 through A. My sheets are out of order, I apologize. It looks like 35. Yes, A1 through A35 are hereby approved. As it pertains to the personnel agenda, with the changes that were already made for the record, I will be approving action items B1 through B7. B1 through B7 are hereby approved. As it pertains to the business agenda, I will be approving action items C1 through C7. Action items C1 through C7 are hereby approved. Under the ESSER agenda, with the modifications that were noted for the record, I will be approving uh, uh, action items D1 through D11. D1 through D11 are hereby approved. And under our policy agenda, action items E1 through E11, I hereby approve action items E1 through E11. At this time, we will move on for general public comment statement. And again, we have the sign-in sheet, Ms. Denise Mosley. Thank you. Ms. Karen Meyer. Good evening again. Good evening. How do we know about the inventory at the Walmart in Eddystone that says Chester, and what is the profit from the items? Hold it back. <laughs> the items that are on sale at Walmart. At Walmart. Mm -hmm. How do we know about their inventory and what profit that our district receives from the items that are being sold? So I, um, I, I want to get back to you on that, but I do know that there is a quarterly payment that comes mm -hmm. from the sales of the Chester High School or Chester Upland paraphernalia that is sold outside of here. Um, I don't know exactly how much those uh, quarterly payments are. They vary depending on, of course, the sales value. But um, I can look up an agreement and share that with you at a later date. So do we know the inventory before they even put it out? Is that knowledge for the district? I'm just I would imagine that. Let's pull the agreement and we can discuss that. Okay. And what emergency tactics are in place for our students in case of an active shooter entering into our buildings? You want to talk about the... Yeah, I, just can, have it yeah I, I can speak to it. We just had um, a member of the Delco SWAT team come in and speak with the... Um, Entire staff is passed in service. We have another um, in service is coming November 8th to speak to that. So obviously all this information is disseminated to the students. Um, there are drills that the students are required to participate in um, yearly. So we have a full plan on how this is being addressed. So um, we've, we've actively been engaged in with our students and with our staff this school year, focusing on safety and, and obviously primarily, um, they call it now um, active assault. Uh, because they say that assaults come in many different forms, not just shooters any longer, but right. we are focused on that. So is it done just yearly, or is it something that's done monthly? Oh, no, it's ongoing. So this is um, the training that the staff is required to, to participate in is annual. So that's yearly with the staff. 
Um, you are required to, by law, to have a active shooter shelter in place drill one time a year, but most school districts it's necessary to do you know, multiple times. So that's something we are focusing on. We're actually in the process of creating a crisis response plan that's being worked on, that's being shared with the, um, the district. Actually, one of, I believe it's our next presentation, there will be um, someone here to present on that crisis response plan and many of the questions that you're asking this evening. I was just going to ask that question. And last thing is, when is the glass that has been missing on the second floor going to be replaced in the high school? I'm, I'm angry about it. I'll say that because I've yelled and screamed and jumped, and I know it was ordered. Um, by the end of the month. This month? Yeah. Oh. Even if I have to go build myself. Me and Dr. Sutton, we do sheetrock on the <laughs> Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Okay. Miss Arnold. Thank you again. Um, I also had the same concerns, Ms. Maya, about the um, active shooter. We had talked about that before, and we still have not heard a date when we will actually start those drills in the individual schools where the students will go through whatever they need to in order to know what and how they are to behave in the event that we have an active shooter. And so I, too, am concerned about us providing those services and that training. And so I will be waiting too to hear a date when we will actually start to do those actively in the building. We've and talked about it before parents, and we've been we, promised we, before. We talked about and what was promised was that the training for the staff will happen and we've had three trainings for staff. So yes. students, this is the first that I'm hearing of students from you, but it is calendar for students. So that's going to happen. Um, for the special ed, services that we provide. We have not had, I think, a special ed instructor or services for children who are considered gifted. We did not have a very rigorous program before. And one of my concerns is that we have students who are extremely capable of learning past what they're being provided in the classrooms. And I do not want those children to be miseducated. And um, I'm asking again, this is prior to your coming, sir, but I'm asking again that we put more rigor in that end of the education uh, spectrum for those children who are highly gifted. The marquee at Toby, and I think maybe the marquee went dark here at Chester High a few days ago. My concern, question is, when will we repair the one at Toby? It has been uh, needing repair for quite some time. We've had the promises that they would be taken care of, but I don't think it has been. And now I think we have an additional concern with the marquee for Chester High. So that's something that I would ask you all to put on your list of to-dos. Second to-do, a third to-do, is that we continue to have failing portions of our intercom systems in several of our buildings. If something were to happen, and what happens now is that a child would have to go to a classroom to inform the people about what's going on or what have you, there are portions of the buildings where people cannot hear announcements, etc. That has been an issue for years, and so I'm asking again, sirs, that um, you put that on your list of to-dos. Staff is continuing to leave the district, and that bothers me an awful lot. I'm sure it bothers you too. One of the things that I want us to look at to help the retention is this whole thing of morale. I've had these discussions with receivers before. I haven't had one with you. Uh, but what I would like for us to do is to put particular attention to service to us. We have administration here. We have people in the buildings who are providing the hands-on instruction for the students. And what happens too often is there's two cultures, an us and a them. And I would want us to be experts in eliminating that so that all of us will feel as if we are one community and that we're moving down the road with the same agenda. And so I simply ask you, 
to attend to those issues that you've inherited and to pay particular attention to those so that we can do those intangible things to help people feel valued, and I say that seriously, valued, and they, they will want to stay and continue to work through the difficulties. There are a lot more details I could give you, but I'll simply say it that way tonight. And Ms. Arnold, I want to ask Ms. Williams if she can set a meeting up with us, to, you and I, to talk about that. As you, you said, we, we haven't had that conversation, and that is an area of focus that I, I am focusing on, and I would love you know, to engage in some dialogue around. Yes, and I would also say, too, that we need to open up that conversation to all of us. I know there are several hundred people. I'm not saying that you need to have a one-on-one -on -one with 200 several people like that. But what I mean is to open it up to the people who cut the grass, the people who provide the meals, the people in the administration, all of us, so that we can really see some more serious effort that we are one community. I'll say that. And the, uh, another item is the PBIS, PBIS funds. I think I continue to hear that those funds are not equally available in all of the buildings as they try to provide incentives for our children. I know we had some hiccups with that last year. And so this is what November, what I'm asking you to do is pay particular attention to be sure that all of the buildings, after school programs, et cetera, are receiving those funds so that our children can be aided in their motivations. Okay. Last thing I want to say. Yeah, yeah. That was addressed yesterday and have issues resolved, every building is funded at their appropriate level. Well you know I'm going to probably hear about that and I will tell you if there's a difference with what you're saying tonight and what they are experiencing. That yeah. happens Yeah, yeah I know. Three times every story. But PD was here yesterday and it was resolved. Yes, thank you. The other thing that I want to say to you, sir, and this is extremely serious, or maybe more important than all of it. We've had receivers come and we've had receivers go. And what concerns me is that after each one who has left, the Chester Upland School District's rank academically and the Commonwealth has not changed. If we are not 500, we're 501 at the bottom of the list. I participated in strategic planning in this building, in this space, some time ago. I've done other strategic plans for many years. Sir, I'm asking that we have a strategic plan to change our culture and to move the academic performance close the gaps, look at achievement, in such a way that our children are no longer at the bottom of that list. Our receivers have paid good attention to buildings. They have paid good attention to real estate. They have sold some when we ask them not to, etc. But I'm yet, I've yet to see what we need for change, trying to control it. And the other piece of that is, we don't know how to hold you accountable. Um, we come, we ask questions, we hear people give us promises, and months later, we don't see the change. And I'm really, really concerned about that. You can be very nice to me and say, oh, Ms. Arnold, you're holding us accountable. And I'm thinking, oh, thank you very much. But, so, uh, I'm aware that we don't have any way to hold you accountable for the performance of our children, which is the reason why we're all here. So, just wanted to share that. And Ms. Arnold, for me, it's personal. I think you know that I, I'm home. This is home for me. And I, you know, sometimes I just say things. He won't be here if the academic, academic needle doesn't shift. And that was his commitment to this district. So he knows what he has to do with the team. Because I am with him. We've always been 501. Mm -hmm. And that's not a good place to be. I agree with you. So, and, and 
And we said we weren't going to have dialogue during this meeting, so I'm breaking the rule too, so I'm going to have to pay somebody some money, I think, um, out there. But, um, Ms. Arnold, I, I would say to you about moving the needle academically, there's a ton of things that are required to do that. I mean, obviously, you speak of morale in the district, which is important. You speak about attendance of students, attendance of teachers. There are several factors that go into what we're trying to do, but I can tell you that everybody comes to this district every day, works extremely hard to, to move that needle. There are so many underlying issues that happened years ago. They're not gonna be fixed tomorrow, but I can promise you this, that we do have a plan. Dr. Sutton um, and Dr., um, excuse me, Ms. Mosley are gonna be presenting in January on um, in that mid-year point on what's going on. Dr. Sutton will be speaking to the academics at that point. Um, there are things that are in place right now that I would say are moving the needle in this district. So I think what needs to happen is just a, a direct conversation with you. Um, my walk in Wednesday with, um, was held this past week. And you know, if you come in on the next walk in Wednesday, I'll be able to share additional information with you about things that are happening to move the needle. Tell the public, tell Chester what you're doing. Absolutely. Uh, I appreciate you wanting to tell me. But that's part of the presentation. Yeah. So Chester and the community will know, and I think what has, what's important, I know I'm getting off track. That's okay. That's okay, that's okay. thank you. It's, it's okay, right? That's okay. All right. People need to come out. You know, and I, I would see people like you, Ms. Mosley and Ms. Maya, who I are here month after month. It's gonna take more than the three of you to help us to move the needle. I can tell you, people will come in and talk about every issue, but academics. You know, we were, we've been at the bottom for, for years, but I can tell you what happens in these meetings, people come and complain about trivial issues, but they're not screaming about our kids who are in 11th and 12th grade who are reading on the second grade but reading them. Those are the issues that we do need to have conversations about. You know, this man can't fix it alone as the you know, chief academic officers, the teachers can't fix it alone. It's gonna take a community to do this. This is an issue that's plagued this community for years. And month after month, you come and you share many of the same things. You know, first it was the, you know, it was the flow chart for a while, so I think, I think the horror chart is in a good place for the most part. Well, but anyway. Well, we'll talk about it. I, yes, I think we've done okay. it with, with another night. That. So the flow chart, I hope, is, is gone. But I will tell you this, that what we want to hear are about these academics. I agree with you. That is why we are all here. Many of us have come to this district to provide support to these children who have been in great need for many, many years. And again, it's, it's us working collectively to move that needle. But there is a game plan. There is a plan in place to make those adjustments. And you will hear more about it. And the community of Chester will hear more about it. We're not sitting here doing nothing. I can promise you that. So morale is, it, it, it comes from all of us together. I can't change the morale single-handedly. You can't. It's going to take all of us to do that. So we'll talk more. Yes, I just wanted to put it out there for the record. Yes, and I, I appreciate your hearing me. Of course. Thank you. Ms. Harris. If I can. As the old saying, Rome wasn't built in the night. And we need to get out to the public and to Chester to let them know change doesn't happen overnight. And to respect the ones that are in authority that are trying to get the change done. To back our teachers to back our board, not to tear each other down when something is not going your way. I came back to this board because I want to be a part of the change. How many years have we been in receivership? I want to be a part of it. I don't have any babies in school anymore, but my neighbors have children in this district. Let's work together and stop tearing each other down and tearing the board down and saying this and carrying things back and forth. That's not going to do it. Back the ones that are trying to bring change to this district. That's all I have to say. Thank you, receiver. Nichols. Thank you, Mr. Baird. Uh, that... Just one thing I don't know. Okay. Yeah. That is... I am concerned that we are able to hear criticisms, a call for change with a positive heart, and put positive language around that. You are the professionals. Some of us are not. 
And so when you hear what we have to say, it's important that you hear the heart of it, you take the criticism part, you be big boys and girls, and you help us all go down that road. There's a way that we can respond to each other that will shut us down. And there's another way we can respond to each other where people will come together and say whatever they need and share with you, and we can get more work done that way. So please, please, you know you have nine intelligences, folks, and two of those has to do with people. <laughs> Interpersonal skills and intrapersonal skills, and this is one time we need to see a genius level on those intelligences, because that's gonna help us do a whole lot to move our district together. Ms. Quell, well, I'll say this. I will say that um, many people come to me about what's new, what's changing in this district. I was going to walk away from this board, but I'm not now because I see the change coming. I see some good and I see some disappointment as well from other people. Studies will tell you it takes three to five years to turn a district around anywhere in this country. Anywhere. I do. And we can. There are positive changes happening, uh, and um, I back all I back all of you because I didn't walk away as a result of the change that I'm seeing. And, and, and that's much appreciated. I'll say this. Uh, I think I'll speak for myself in the cabinet because I know them very, very well. I know the board. We're we're big boys and girls. Mm -hmm. I've been doing this for years in some some type of capacity. So when the public comes up and they make their comments, I'm very respectful and I take it in. I don't, it doesn't offend me at all because I'm always learning, right? I'm always trying to be a better person and as we all are, we're trying to move the needle here. So we welcome it. Please, bring it. I just said in our executive session, we have over 50,000 constituents. So that's 50,000 people pulling in 50,000 different directions. We're built for it. I'm built for it. So I thank you, Ms. Arnold, for your, your uh, you know, yes. your constructive sure. criticism. We take it. Comes with the job. You can't do it. Shouldn't be sitting up here. So I don't want you to think that. And I think all of us, we, we feel that way. So. Pardon me? Oh, sorry. I, I thank you for it. Yes, Ms. Arnold may have come to that microphone and said concerns. People do things differently. Mm -hmm. I try not to do things publicly, but you best believe I have come directly yes. and some of the same things because we are trying to work together. Mm -hmm. But we really have to be mindful of our tone and how that was spent. Because not only do we come and say what the concern is, but the people that are here will roll up our sleeves and get up and do as well. So we are working together. Don't let this become the us dumb. We do work together. We do support this district. We do lend our strength. So we, we do want to see change. All she asked was what is the plan? She didn't say it had to change tomorrow. She simply asked what was the plan. Mm -hmm. And if the plan is, is being developed, then simply present it. We are working together. And I don't want anyone to feel that way about Ms. Arnold, myself, Karamaya, or any person that comes here every single month because we're willing to do the work too. And we are going to hold every person that sits in a seat accountable. Every person, board member or cabinet member, that's what we're supposed to do. Yep. You're right. All parts of mine are clear. It's all for our children. And I, I'll but, say it, I love you all. <laughs> and it wasn't directed. Have a good evening. <laughs> I wasn't the right department to the ones that don't come out. It's not. It's, it was the next time.